Okay, so I just finished grading the activities 116 on the different kinds of gates, and I wanted to make sure that I took time to review what each of those gates was so that you're able to take away from the activity the important details from that activity because it involved a lot of like multi sim and filling out the little truth tables and stuff. I saw them all sitting right here. And then you had to, to answer the question from the analysis of the truth table, what do you think these gates mean? And for the most part, you guys were spot on. There were a couple of explanations of some of the gates that were a little bit shaky. So I just wanted to, to straighten all of those out. So the first kind of gate that you looked at was something called an inverter. And just so we're clear on what those look like, those are this gate right here. Now that by itself is a buffer. The inverter is that little circle on the end. And you'll notice that um, with all of the gates, when you see that little circle and when you see it on the pinouts, like the, you'll sometimes see a little circle, um, it means like low or invert or negate. And so what an inverter does is it takes like a high input and makes it low or it takes a low input and makes it high. So if you need to flip like a signal, that is the gate that you would use to do. It's called an inverter. There's your diagram and basically your truth table, what it does. The next one that you looked at was an AND gate, and it was like a basic two input AND gate. Now the AND gate looks like this where it's rounded and it has one output, and it's kind of intuitive what it is. Um, the output goes high when both inputs, so like input X and input Y are both high. So the truth table that you filled out looks something like this, where you had the X and the Y, and then your output was the Z, and if they were both low, the output was low, and so forth. And so pretty much when you're exploring it, you figure out that uh, X and Y both have to be high in order for the output. And right now on my little breadboard, that's how that's hooked up. It's hooked up to an AND gate. So there's like these two switches. And if, as long as only one of the switches is on, it, the light doesn't go on. You have to turn both of the switches on in order for the light to go on. And I could also like take that chip out and put in an OR gate. The next gate you looked at was a NAND gate. And the key there is that N. And literally that means negate the AND. Okay, like that's what that means. And so the symbol for that gate is the AND from a couple slides ago, except you've got that little negation, that little circle that means to negate it. So where the um, AND gate was like low, 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 and then it went high only when both of the inputs were high, that little negation thing right there, okay, like that flips all of them. And so it will go like this, it'll go high, 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 low. And so those of you that answered that question, it inverts the AND gate or it like flips the AND gate, like that's that's what you're driving at. So you've got an AND gate that only goes high when, when both inputs are high, X and Y are high. Um, and then the NAND like just flips that, it negates your AND. Then we get into the OR. So um, you're clear on what the OR looks like. The OR looks like this. So it's got like a little bit of a point on it. All right. And so it's different. The AND is that roundy, like not like a semicircle thing, but like part of a, it's rounded on the end. The OR gate comes to this like kind of point um, on it. And I'm, dry, I'm drawn on like a laptop, so it's not the, the greatest thing. But um, once again, you have your inputs, X and Y. And so your truth table looked something like this. Um, so if both of them were low, the output was low. But if one or the other went high and hence the name of the or gate if one or the other went high the output went high if they were both high the input output was also high and that's critical okay um that's that's critical 
Um, that's what's called the inclusive or and all of your digital stuff and all of your mathematics default to something called the inclusive or. Okay, and what that means is that that line is included. So it's kind of like um, at the end of a meal in a restaurant, if the waiter says, would anyone like coffee or dessert? It's included. If you decide it's inclusive, if you want coffee and dessert, that's fine. Like you can still have that. The waiter's not going to tell you, no, you can't have the coffee and dessert. You have to pick one or the other. Um, and so both of them are included. So that's, that's your or gate. Um, then we get to the nor, and once again, that N literally means negate the or, okay? So you've got your or gate, again, with that, like, kind of point on it, and now you have the little circle, which indicates that it's negating it, and where the or was, like, 0, 1, 1, 1, the nor is going to negate all of those outputs. So you'll have one, zero, zero, zero. So those of you that answered, answered along the lines of it flips the or or it negates the or, like that's what it's driving at. I just wanted to make sure that we were tying that truth table in with the little prefix in, like the n, that's what it means, and with the little dot there that you are you know how to interpret all of that. It's like just different ways, like your schematic and then a letter way of describing what's happening with those gates. Um, incidentally, you can build everything out of NAND gates and NOR gates. Uh, there are ways to consolidate like the gates so that you don't have to use like an OR or an AND or an INVERT or anything. It's kind of a nuisance, but um, what it does is it actually saves on the number of different kind of IC chips that you would use. So you could like just get NAND gates and build everything you need with that. It's like a pain to design it that way. It is something that we do in, I don't know if it's unit two or unit three, in this class, but you have to take a circuit that you used and in OR gates and then redesign it so that it just uses NAND and NOR. The last one here is the ZOR gate. Um, and so you got this idea that it's going to have something to do with the OR, but then it's, okay, what is the X um, got to do with that? And the symbol for the, like, the ZOR gate is this. It's got like two backs on it so you've got like your or but it's got like that extra little back on it and so the truth table for this is going to be similar to the truth table for the or um, where like if neither of them are on then you don't have it and then one of them goes on you do and what makes this one different is when they both go on, it turns back off. And so that like X is literally for exclusive. Um, so the X is for the exclusive. So it's like, called a ZOR gate. Um, I guess maybe some people say XOR, but that's weird. I don't, I just say ZOR gate. Um, and that's an exclusive OR, meaning you're excluding the possibility that they could both go high. So going back to the restaurant, um, if you get an entree, sometimes it'll say like your choice of soup or salad, that's exclusive. Um, you can't get the soup and the salad both, like the waiter's going to say, I'm sorry, you have to pick one or the other, not both. So um, the difference between the or and the zor is whether or not that one one is included, and it does correspond to our English language and the use of the word or. Sometimes we mean like an inclusive or, or, and sometimes we mean an exclusive or. Um, so like, for example, um, you have to take um, a math elective. You can take calculus AB or AP stat. Um, if you want to take both of those, that's totally fine. Like that, as long as it fits in your schedule. Um, but if you have, um, trying to think of like what we have. Um, a couple of years ago, we offered a class called Math Analysis and Analysis of Functions. And that was kind of like a, like a diet pre-calculus. You could not take that course and pre-calculus. Those were mutually exclusive credits, math credits that you could get. So you had to pick one or the other. If you took pre-calculus, you could not go and get the credit for Math Analysis, um, Analysis of Functions. If you took analysis of functions, you you no longer qualify to take pre-cal, and it kind of cut off the opportunity for calculus. So you 
had to be careful about you know what your long range plans were. So I wanted to make this video just to go over that and make sure that everybody was on the same page and that we got out of that activity the really important parts, um, the schematic and the notation and then what these gates do.